Once you have pressed the link to the normal Alkins lesson, you should see this window. Go ahead and press start. First thing it's asking us to do is to name the uh, alkane or the normal alkane which is on the screen. So go ahead and press OK. Now when you see the picture on there, you can go ahead and drag which means to click and move the mouse along like that. And you should be able to go ahead and rotate the molecule. Now these normal alkanes are basically uh, chains of carbon that have as many hydrogens that are required to go ahead and complete a structure. Okay, the next thing you could do is you could go ahead and resize the structure so that you can see the you can see it properly. And you can go ahead and count. And there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, eleven carbon chain is designated as undecane. And once you've done this, you can go ahead and hit continue and you'll get a message of whether the structure is correct or not. Press the next button for the next question. Now in this one you're asked to draw decane. Decane stands for 10, so you just have to draw a 10 carbon chain. So here we go, 1, 2, 3, 4. All I'm doing is dragging uh, as I'm moving to a new position. So that's 5 carbon, 6 carbon, 7, 8, 9, now make sure you don't make the error on this lesson uh, that a lot of students do, which is assuming that if you do 10 strokes, you'll get 10 carbons. In reality, to get to this structure, all we have to do is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 strokes, and that created 10 carbons. Now once you've added the carbons, you can add the hydrogens automatically by clicking Action and add H and E. And once you do that, go ahead and click, click Toggle and Arrange. And you can also go back and hit Action and Fit. Fit the structure on the screen. And click on Screen and go to Roll. And once you do that, you should be able to see your 10 carbon chain on the screen. So that's Decking or End Decking. So hit Continue. Go ahead and press Next. In this case, you're asked to draw a six carbon chain, so that's hexane. So we'll go ahead and do five strokes. Okay, and five strokes will give you six carbons. Go ahead and add the hydrogens. Go ahead and arrange the structure. Go ahead and fit it on the screen. And then go ahead and switch it to roll, and you can take a look at the molecule. Press continue, and you'll get it correct. Now let's go ahead and uh, do the next one. It's asking for octane, so octane stands for 8. And so we'll do 7 strokes. And 7 strokes, okay, will go ahead and give us uh, the octane structure. Go ahead and hit action, add, arrange, fit, and go ahead and click on roll. And all those actions right there will give you octane, or normal alkane. Now if you want to check yourself some more, you can also go ahead and go to Action and click on Info. And it's asking right now Sigma Framework only, and in this case it doesn't really matter which one you answer, but just to get used to things, go ahead and press No. When you do this, you'll go ahead and see that the formula for the structure is C8H18, which means there's 8 carbons and 18 hydrogens in the structure. Don't worry about all the other information that's given on the screen right now. Go ahead and press continue, and you'll go ahead and see that you're correct again. Press next, and you're asked for heptane. So heptane is the code for a 7 carbon chain. And so again, that'll just be what? 6 strokes. Go ahead and hit add, arrange, put the structures on the screen, and go ahead and click on wall. Okay? So this is the proper uh, uh, answer for heptane. But uh, let's do something different now. Okay. Let me go ahead and clear the screen and show you another structure that uh, also has seven carbons. Okay. So here I have seven carbons also, and I'll go ahead and add the hydrogens. Okay. Now if you're wondering how many hydrogens am I actually adding to the structure, um, and that's something that we'll learn on there. Well, the answer is 
to be happy, each one of these carbons has to have four bonds to it. So the answer is a complement of four of the number of bonds that it has to carbon. And what do we mean by that? Well, let me go ahead and toggle and hide the hydrogens here. So this was the original picture. So in this case, this carbon has one bond to carbon, and therefore, to complete the four bonds that it needs, then we need to add three hydrogens here. In this particular case, I have already two bonds to carbon, so all I need is two hydrogens on this carbon. In this case, I have three bonds to carbon, so I just need one more hydrogen. And in this case, I have one bond to carbon, so I need three hydrogens. I have two bonds to carbon, so I need two more hydrogens. I have two bonds to carbon, so I need two more hydrogens. And in this case, I have three bonds, or one bond to carbon, so I need three hydrogens. So let me go back to toggle, uh, uh, show or hide hydrogens, and you'll see that we did exactly what we were just talking about right there. Okay, now that we have the structure, I also want you to learn another nomenclature for uh, referring to the different carbons in, uh, in this alkane structure. And um, the nomenclature I want you to learn is that when you have a carbon that has three hydrogen on it, we're going to call that as a methyl. So let me write down down here. Methyl is written M-E-T-H-Y-E-L. When we have a carbon that has two hydrogens on there, we're going to refer to that as a methylene. Okay? And when we have a carbon that has only one hydrogen on it, we're going to refer to that as being a methine. Okay? And methylene, uh, I forgot to tell you, is M-E-T-H-Y-L-E-N-E. -E -E, and methine is M-E-T-H-I-N-E. -E. Okay? Now, there's another way of referring to all these uh, uh, carbons, the ones that we've, uh, we've just talked about. And I'm going to go ahead and hide the hydrogens again. The other way I want you to refer to these carbons is by the number of bonds that they have to another carbon. So for instance, um, in this case, the methyl is, is referred to as being primary because it's only bonded to one other carbon. And in this case, okay, the methylene, where we're talking about a carbon with two hydrogens, is referred to being as being secondary. Okay? because it has two bonds to carbon. And this methine is referred to as uh, being tertiary, okay, because it has, what, three bonds to uh, carbon right there. And there will also be a type of carbon that has four bonds to it, so that will actually be called quaternary. Okay, so this way of referring to the carbons is how many bonds does each one of the carbons, in this case, have two other carbon. Um, later on, we can see that we can refer to nitrogens in the same way um, uh, or other atoms, and this would just be basically a count of how many bonds we have to carbon. In this case, methyl, methylene, and methine is referring to how many bonds to hydrogen that we have. Now, in this case, methyl and primary correspond, and methylene and secondary correspond, and methine and tertiary correspond. But we'll see later on that this is not always true, so do not make the association about uh, about that. Okay, in any respect, I had you draw this compound, and this compound is not heptane. It's not a seven carbon uh, chain like this. It's actually a six carbon chain with another carbon on here. Okay, and let me go ahead and toggle and uh, show the hydrogens again, and now I'm going to press continue. Okay, and when we do that, I get an incorrect message because, you know, this is not what the lesson is asking for, but I just wanted to show you the message that you will get uh, in these cases. And the message says, you do a constitutional or structural isomer of heptane. What this means is that if um, you ever get this message, okay, constitutional or structural isomer are just the same, are different names for referring to the same kind of thing. But isomers are compounds that have the same atoms but do not, uh, but are not the same. That's the more important. So same atoms but are not the same. And constitutional or structural isomer refers to isomers or compounds that have the same atoms like this but are not connected in the proper fashion like that. And so that's what we did in this structure. Okay? Rather than connecting the carbons in a chain, we decided to go ahead and do what uh, is called branching like this. Later on, we'll go ahead and learn how to name these compounds right here. But I just wanted to make sure that you saw the kind of message that you get if you answer incorrectly. Now, decane. Okay, let me show you decane. We've already seen actually just, uh, this is normal or N decane like that. That's what the little N stands for here. Okay, but I wanted to go ahead and show you, and 
make sure that uh, you're using a lower case n. There, there's a different nomenclature for another type of, uh, of compound that has a large or a capital N like that. So let me go ahead and and uh, and, um, and make another structure here. Now, what I'm going to do in this case right here is I'm not even going to try to have the same atoms like that. So, for instance, here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, okay, 10. I do have the 10 carbons like this. But in this case, I'm not going to add the hydrogens on here because I want to show you what message you will get if you do not add the proper number of hydrogens like that. Okay? And, for instance, I just added another carbon by accident. So, you can go ahead and pack back up here and click on Action and click undo and when you do that let's go ahead and click continue now again remember this is the wrong answer because I forgot all the hydrogens that I was supposed to draw in these carbons right here uh, their valence we say is not satisfied because they are not bonded to four uh, different atoms like that so let's press continue now in this case I get the message incorrect again because it's not what I wanted but now I get the message non-isomeric or the number of cyclic pi electrons is incorrect. Now, this part right here, we won't see until perhaps uh, next semester. I'm not sure. It uh, depends on, uh, on the text that you're using like this. But the term non-isomeric is the one I want you to concentrate. Now, remember we just said isomers were compounds that have the same atoms but are different. And I showed you constitutional isomers right now from the previous examples. And so that refers to not being connected properly. Well, in this case, when we're using the term non-isomeric, we're telling you that you did not even add the right number or did not have either the right number or the correct atoms for the structure that you were being asked to draw. In this case, we know what the problem is. We forgot to add the hydrogens. So when you do this lesson and you're drawing your carbon chains, just make sure that you add all the hydrogens and do it automatically for right now uh, with add the HME because it's actually pretty straightforward. Okay, let's go ahead and go and uh, look at the next question right here. Okay, and uh, now in this case I can go ahead and, and count them: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And if I roll around, there's twelve. Okay, uh, this compound. Now these are all Greek names, so this is actually called dodecane. That's how we would go ahead and write. The do is two, and the decane is ten, so that would be twelve, and that is the correct answer. In fact, all we have to learn for this lesson is that methane stands for a one-carbon chain, okay, uh, ethane stands for a two-carbon chain, propane stands for a three-carbon chain, butane stands for four, and after that it's all Greek, because you have already seen pent, which is, stands for five, hex, which stands for six, hept, which stands for seven in Greek, oct, which stands for uh, eight, known, which stands for nine, okay, and dec which stands for 10. And we've already seen in this lesson also undecane and dodecane. And we could go ahead and go try decane, and uh, we could keep on going on there. And there's a lot of other Greek terms that we could go up to larger and larger carbon chains like that. But in, in essence, this is all that this lesson is going to ask you. Do you know how to count from 1 to 12? Okay? And... Uh, and so let's go ahead and uh, respond to this as the name uh, is this. Uh, obviously, it's going to be wrong, so let me show you what the program will show you when you answer the incorrect name. And so what the program will tell you is what is the correct name, at least for this lesson. Later on in other lessons, you won't, have, uh, you won't be given uh, the proper name for the structure. You'll just have to uh, learn what that is. Okay, let's look at another question here. In this case, is it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? Okay, so you should answer what? Heptane. All right. Now, while you're looking at the structure, what I want you to do is uh, I want you to go ahead and explore with the program. There's different things that you could do with these structures, you know, since uh, it's asking us to do a name and we've already answered it like this. You could explore, for instance, the periodic table. If you click on the periodic table, then you can go ahead and select a different type of atom. And the atoms that the program right now is limited to are the ones that have a little block around them. So you cannot choose iron or cobalt um, or ruthenium or osmium or iridium or any other or indium or tin or any of the other elements that are on here like that. You are limited to the ones that are on the box like that. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select carbon like that. And if you wanted, you could change one of these uh, hydrogens over to carbon like that. Uh, of course, we don't want to do that right now. Okay, But that's exploration with a product table. 
Later on, I'll show you how to use a single and the uh, uh, electron or the electron pair. Okay, on the about, that's another very interesting thing. You can go ahead and click on about. And you can go ahead and click on the different atoms. And it'll tell you things like charge. And hybridization we'll get into later like that, what that means. Okay, and you can do the same thing for carbon. And for carbon, you'll also get other information. Again, the charge, the oxidation state, uh, and we'll explain that later. And something called hybridization. Okay, you could do that. You can also explore angles. And angles are very uh, important to explore in these alkenes because in these alkenes, all the carbons have a maximum of or have four different uh, bonds connected to them. So I'm going to go ahead and click on one bond, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on another bond. And when you do that, you'll go ahead and see these terms. One term uh, is called absolute angle, and the other one is called the XY plane or projection angle like that. And in this particular program, you're given either uh, uh, you know, the acute or the obtuse angle like this, which are what complements of each other. They should add up to 180 degrees like that. And the reason why we're given these choices are basically because um, you don't have to select uh, bonds that are right next to each other. For instance, I could click on this bond, and I could click on this bond. And therefore, you know, what angle do you want between those two very remote bonds uh, for themselves? Okay, now let me explain to you the difference between the absolute and the and the XY or projection angle. So to do that, let me go ahead and, and clear the screen. And I know we had heptane, and that's what we're supposed to answer for this question right here. But let me go ahead and click on the screen and make the simplest of the uh, alkanes that we have. And let me go ahead and fit this on the screen so it's nice and big, and you can go ahead and roll this on the screen. Okay, this is methane. Okay, if you look at methane, methane is actually a per perfect tetrahedron. And what do we mean by that? Well, if you were to connect the dots between all the hydrogens that you have on methane with a center of carbon here, then you would form a tetrahedron, okay? Or a tetrahedral shape like that, okay? Now, uh, in your class, hopefully you'll go over, you know, being able to determine this angle right here. But if uh, you study this as a tetrahedron, then you should know that the absolute angle between uh, those two hydrogen bonds, or bonds between hydrogen and carbon, is actually rounded off to 109.5. In fact, that's a number when we ask you tetrahedral angle, you'll always answer 109.5. Okay? Now, if I take this angle right here, what is that absolute angle? That was what? 109.5. And the absolute angle means that if you go ahead and turn the angle so that all the atoms and the bonds are in the same plane right here, then that's that, um, <coughs> that's that obtuse angle right there, right? Okay, that angle that's greater than 100, uh, than 90 degrees like that. Okay, so we know that. Now, watch what happens when I start rotating the angle, or rotating the molecule like this. Okay, and when you look at that bond now right there, it doesn't look like 190 degrees anymore, which means that this is the projection angle that we want. Okay? Which means if we look at a, a particular angle from a different perspective like this, then you will actually get, or it will appear to be a different angle. And that's what the XY or projection angle is. Okay, so this angle, if you look at it very carefully, it actually looks like it's less than 90 degrees like that. And so that, from the point of view, is actually 21 degrees. So let's go ahead and click OK. okay. And so those are the kinds of things that I want you to learn for, uh, for this lesson. Later on, we'll show you how to use a lot of these other things that are on here. Uh, let's press continue. We got it correct because we were asked to draw uh, heptane and we gave the right name. Let's press next and we're up to question number nine. Most lessons will have ten questions. And so here we're la asked to draw a five carbon chain or a normal uh, pentane chain. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's go ahead and add the hydrogens and we'll hit toggle. And we should be able to answer the, uh, the answer uh, correctly like that. Now before we do that, let me show you some other functions of the program. And um, some of these are self-explanatory. Bond, okay, um, you know, that's if you want to go ahead and bond between two different things, you can go ahead and do that kind of action like there. Again, you can go back to action, undo, and fix things up like that, okay. Um, other things that you can do are chemistry. This is actually the most important button, uh, although very few students actually learn how to use it. They prefer to do things on paper rather than trying to manipulate things on the program. But let me show you how uh, chemistry works. 
What is chemistry? Chemistry is the movement of electrons and compounds. All that you're seeing right here is the structure, okay? But true chemistry is the ability to what? To move the electrons around to make new compounds like that. So in this case, for instance, what I did is I did a homolytic bond breaking. Okay? Homolytic bond breaking just means that you take a bond. Remember that a bond, uh, a good bond at least, a covalent bond that you learned in general chemistry, okay, is actually made up of two electrons. And so in reality, we're using these little uh, these little twos right here to represent the electrons, and that's why I'm unpairing them right there. Okay, homolytically we say. Let me go ahead and arrange it like that. Okay. Now let me go back to chemistry. What's the other way that you can move the electrons around? The other way we refer to it as being heterolytic, and that's where you take the electrons from the bond, and rather than being on just one atom, they're actually on two atoms. So let me show you the difference between seeing a bond on one atom and the other like this, okay? Because it still looks like a two. Okay? So to do that, let me go ahead and show you that if you actually drag, okay, and what am I doing? I'm actually on roll. Okay, if you drag on on a on a bond, let me do that right here, okay? Okay, on electrons right here. You can see that this is what actually a pair of electrons looks like. Okay? It should look like a two. Let me make this a little larger. I can go to resize and I can make this as large as I want. And when I go to roll, then I can go ahead and roll the molecule. And you see, those electrons are paired right there. Now I'm going to go back to chemistry, and I'm going to show you what they look like unpaired. So I'm here taking the tube, and I'm splitting it in half right there. Okay. Now, in reality, these electrons would not exist this way on this uh, molecule, but I just want to illustrate uh, the difference in what they appear. Okay. So when you just have an unpaired electron, or what we call a radical, you will see your um, electrons as a half tube like that. Okay? And so let me go ahead and fix the structure up again. Let me go back up and undo. I think you can undo about 20 steps um, and get back to the structure that you had. So here we're back to unpenting what we were supposed to do. Okay, let's go to screen. Delete is pretty obvious. If you're in delete mode, you'll be able to uh, delete atoms or bonds. Okay, light is uh, just for cosmetic reasons. If you want to go ahead and change the point of view of uh, where the light appears to be coming, you can just drag on the screen and change where the, the light appears to be shining from like that. Okay, this is done for all the atoms. Move is just like we said. You're moving uh, the molecule around. But you can also move on an atom if you want to move an individual atom. Or in particular, in this program, if you move on a carbon, the carbon and its hydrogen will also move because that seems to be important for these structures. Resize we've already seen, roll we've seen. Uh, let me show you there's actually two, uh, three types of roll. Okay? In fact, move functions the same way, but I can't show you everything right now. Okay? And so there's three types of roll. If I just roll on the screen, <coughs> I'm rolling everything with respect to the center of the screen. I can also roll on an atom. If I roll on an atom, I'm rolling everything with respect to an atom. And then the third way of actually rolling things is if I want to manipulate one structure, if I happen to have more than one structure on the screen, in fact, let me go ahead and go to bond and just add another thing right here, just to, just to prove the point. If I want to manipulate this structure uh, independent of this other structure right here, then I can roll on a bond. And when I do that, then you'll go ahead and see like this, individual manipulation, and it's with respect to that bond that I, that, um, that I just dragged on. Okay, um, rotate's also interesting. Rotate works like roll, and move will also move in the same way. In fact, I told you I wasn't going to show you right now, but let me show you move. Again, there's move the whole thing. There's what? Move one atom, and then the third way is what? Move on a bond, and you're removing or moving one structure with respect to another. The move will come in really handy, and the roll and all these ways that I'm showing you right now to manipulate the structures will come in really handy when we start manipulating um, uh, or doing more um, more reactions. Okay, rotate has uh, the same kind of function. If I if I go ahead and rotate on the screen, or just drag on the screen, I'm rotating in the xy plane. If I go ahead and rotate on an atom, I'm rotating everything with respect to that atom. Or if I go ahead and click on a bond, let me choose another bond over here, then I can go ahead and rotate one structure independent of another structure with respect to that bond. Okay, um, twist. Twist is a very interesting function also. It pertains to bonds. So let me go ahead and click on a bond and twist. 
And so what you're able to do is actually twist around the bond like that. And what this difference is, um, we'll see, <coughs> or we'll talk about, uh, or you should talk about in your classes, a difference in what co it's called a confirmation. Let me write that word for you, okay? Confirmation. Okay, confirmation. Okay. Or we also refer to different structures that just vary by twist by that twisting of the bond as confirmers. Okay, which means that we think they're different structures, but you know, with the amount of energy these molecules have, it's very easy for them to actually twist one from from this shape to the other right there. Okay, so we're not doing any chemistry, we're not breaking any bonds or anything like that. Okay, so that's what twist will allow us to do. And if you combine this with actually a head-on projection or look at a molecule like this, then what we can actually do is now go ahead and combine twist. And you're not really seeing the uh, the bond that you're twisting on, okay? but it appears to just be moving one part with respect to uh, the other part of the molecule like that. And that will come in handy when you start also using the angle because we'll be concerned about what is the projection angle between, okay, what is the projection angle between uh, two bonds when we're looking down uh, at one carbon with respect to another when we start uh, talking about uh, conformational differences or conformers. Okay, on actions we've already seen uh, adding I hydrogens, we've already seen fit. Mirror image will come in handy. This is mirror image and the XY plane. Undo we've already seen. Clear is obvious. Okay, arrange we've already seen. Uh, show hydro hydrogens we've already seen. I won't go ahead and show you these two other things. You can explore with them like this. Just be careful. You might not be able to uh, stop the screen. Okay. Uh, lastly, I want you to show you some different views of the molecules that we have on here. In fact, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this other set of carbons on there because it's going to mess up our answer when we eventually answer this question. And let me go ahead and hit Arrange and fit the molecule on here. Let me roll this into position right here. And I told you I wasn't going to show you this, but I can show you this. See? What is this doing? It's just vibrating the molecules. Okay. Uh, other thing you can use is spin. And if you combine that with the roll function, then this is just a fancy screensaver like that. The molecules will spin on their own without you having to do anything. Okay, let me go ahead and turn off the spin now. Okay, now let me go to the views. On the views, you can view uh, the molecules as Lewis or Lewis structures. And if you remember from your general chemistry or high school chemistry, Lewis structures are basically um, molecules where rather than showing the bonds like these tubes that we had in the structure, um, you're going to show the bonds that actually is little dots okay, or little electrons on there like that. So here's a Lewis structure on there. And if you can't see this on this video, make sure you can go ahead um, and show this and look at the structure yourself like that. Okay, okay uh, other views that you have on here is lines. We have to get used to looking at things at lines. And when you look at things in terms of lines, these, these are actually the bonds right here. Okay? And um, this is actually uh, the kind of notation you need to uh, learn to identify because, you know, we don't really draw this on a piece of paper when you're on an exam. You're actually going to draw this kind of structure. So you need to learn how to draw this. So anytime that you're in a lesson and you want to see the translation, you know, you're shown this kind of structure, then go ahead and show the lines like that or view the lines. Another important thing about these lines is that um, in the pictures that you'll see, if you highlight an, a different atom like this, for instance, you might actually see that uh, that it changes from you know a, a just a simple line to either what we're going to call a wedge, which is a thicker line, or slashes on there. And if you go back to the uh, ball and tube, you'll be able to see what that means. The slashes actually mean that with respect to the atom that you've uh, that you've selected or that you look that you have the cursor over like this that atom is behind it and with the wedges or the thicker line what we mean is that the, the atom that is that is uh, or this particular atom is in front of it so let me go back to the lines and show you that that's true right there okay okay and we just use that because if we're working on a piece of paper then we can't uh, you know we don't necessarily visualize or we can't communicate very well where things are with respect to each other like that. Okay, so we've been working in ball and tube. That's probably the, the most convenient way of viewing things. But some people think that this is a good way of looking at the molecules like that. And basically, in this view of the molecule right here, 
um, you know, you're you're trying to visualize each one of the atoms as as spheres like that. Okay. Um, this isn't per se. If you look in your text, uh, this isn't really what would be called the space field molecule right here, or space field view like this. This is, doesn't really re represent, uh, you know, how far the electrons go from each one of the atoms like that. Okay. It's just uh, our own representation of that. Okay. Now this time you've actually been in Cyclops view like that. So what I'm going to show you now is let me go back to ball and tube right here. And Cyclops view basically is telling you that this is a point of view if you were just using one eye right here. Okay? But what if you wanted to see things in three dimensions? So to see things in three dimensions, if you have those spy kid 3D glasses like this, you can change it over to anaglyph. And you'll see that the pictures are represented by by red blue structures right here, you know, which basically using those spike hit 3D glasses or decoder glasses, you know, one eye will see one of the colors and the other eye will see the other color. So that might help you see things better in three dimensions like that. Okay. And then there's another view uh, on here like that. Let me see if I can click on here. And that's stereoscopic. Now the stereoscopic, you actually, um, you know, have to have a lot of practice using the stereoscopic. And what you would have to do is basically, you know, stretch down the molecule, you know, small enough, and actually change the screen size. Let me show you. I'm going to change the screen size small enough, okay? And you might not see everything on there like that, okay? But the purpose of changing the size of the molecules and doing the screen size is that your left eye overlaps this picture, and your right eye is able to go ahead and stare at this picture. And if you make the screen just the right size on here, then you will actually be able to, um, you know, see the object in three dimensions without using any red blue glasses on here. Okay. So I hope I'm to the right size right here. But let me go back to the Cyclops view. Okay. So that's pretty much the function of the program like this, and it's taken a long time to answer this question. But again, this is uh, draw and pentane or a five carbon chain, and I'll hit continue, and I'm correct. And let me press again. This is the tenth question. This molecule is butane. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it on its side. Okay, and if you actually look at this molecule in the uh, sphere mode, you will see that there's what we call steric, or the sides of the molecule are bumping. And so to alleviate that, I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to go to twist, and then I'm going to go ahead and twist one part of the molecule with respect to another, so that the methyls, okay, are not overlapping with each other. Okay, now I just went really, really fast because I said methyls. What are methyls? Well, let me go back to ball and two. Remember, methyls were carbon with what? Three hydrogens on here. And so here's a methyl, and here's another methyl on here. Okay? And so I've twisted it. It doesn't matter. In both cases, it's a four carbon uh, compound. Whether I had one conformation or one twisting around the uh, bond or the other, both of these compounds were referred to as being butane or N-butane or normal butane, uh, which are the things that you're supposed to learn in this class. Now, there was one last thing that I forgot to uh, that I forgot to point out right here. Okay, and all these uh, normal alkenes, because each one of these carbons is bonded to four different atoms like this. Ideally, each one of these compounds is referred to as being tetra tetrahedral. Okay, tetrahedral. Okay, but if you check the bond angles right here or the absolute angles like we were doing before. In this case, the angle is not 109.5 <coughs> like that. And the reason why it's not is because, well, not all the bonds are equivalent in this in this case right here. <coughs> and so that's why that ideal tetrahedral angle really only applies to carbons that have the same groups attached to them. So in this case, this carbon really has, on this side has an, a methyl, and on this side has a methylene right here. And so that's why this ideal angle is not the same right here. But in respect, we've shown you a lot of how to operate with a program. So we'll hit continue. And in different lessons, we'll go ahead and show you different things. OK. And you click, click OK. Now, a very other important thing. I told you there was 10 questions. And we've already answered 10 questions. But you must press uh, or continue to press next until you see a score. So let me press next again. And now I'm going to see a score. Now I got a 70 because I wanted to show you what kind of errors you would have on here. So press OK. Okay. Um, if you do not press that next like this, then your score will actually not be recorded. So it's very important that you press next until you see a score.
Okay, so that's all I have for you for this first lesson.